there are video game characters we love. But the turn around from Prey, turning it back in, the chase, the resonating strike, and the ace goes through for Peanut! There are characters we hate. The only feasible explanation I can possibly think of for somebody trying to play this character legitimately is if they're just trying to be a total douchebag to somebody. There are even some characters that we love to hate. Bullshit damage, low f***ing cooldowns, a wall that blocks everything, a knockup, and an ult that gives him 50% armor penetration. But then there are those characters who are loved only by a small group of weird degenerates who should hate them. Sorry, Viper Mains. She's D-tier. Now, I see you Viper Mains out there already getting defensive, but hear me out. Even people who used to play her admit that she's F-tier, and that stands for failure. We're, gonna, we're just gonna put this in a, in a tier of its own. So it's time to admit you drank the Kool-Aid and ask yourself the important question. Why did you pick Viper? Why did you join the cult of low-tier trash? Every game has that one character who absolutely sucks, but people play anyway. And the newest inductee to that cult of low tiers is Valorant's most toxic agent, Viper. They call me a monster. Shall I prove them right? She has been pegged as one of the worst, least playable agents in the game since day one. And that's whether you're a pro or a scrub. Her ult is just not good. Her ult most of the time is a liability. I feel like a lot of times it's even, it's, it's, you're actually putting yourself in a disadvantage using her ult. I'm gonna go ahead and put Viper down here because literally nobody touches her. While Viper and her abilities do actually look really cool, they're anything but cool in game. Never mind the guy that you heard to your right, right behind you to your right. Never mind him. Now you're to, there you go, there you go. Uh huh, uh huh. You could have probably defused it. The guy didn't have a good aim. There you go. Boom, now he's gonna the right. There you go. Boom, here we go, here we go. Ah, ah! Viper often falls short when you compare her to other agents in Valorant. Phoenix's flame wall deals actual more damage and is thicker than Viper's, so Viper's wall can be as wide as it is, but if it's too thin and easy to push through, there really isn't much use to it. I don't know. I don't know what they needed to do to Viper. Maybe maybe her ults... I don't know. She, she just kind of feels... Especially when there's a Sova on an enemy team, Viper feels so useless. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. For example, Viper's toxic screen actually gives her location away to enemies, making it more of a liability than an asset. Her Viper pit requires her to stay inside of it or else it collapses, limiting its utility. And on top of all of that, Viper is really complicated. So you have to spend hours mastering her and be good at Valorant to even get close to using her at her full potential. She is complicated. Like you need to really change the way you play and people don't want to put that time in. So if you don't know how to use her, why bother at all? But of course, the Viper mains out there have already joined the cult. And once you're in, you're in. People join the cult of low tiers for all kinds of reasons. But one of the most common ones is that playing a low tier character is basically like playing a competitive game on hard mode. After all, if you beat somebody while you're playing one of the worst characters in the game, that has to mean you're better than them, right? And even if, the, if she's not that strong, if you know how to play and read the game because of what you're doing, you're basically making both teams play on what your moves are. And in my opinion, if you're enough, ex if you have enough experience and, uh, and the ability to read the game, that that alone in a competitive match, that gives you so much power. Mixwell is one of a small group of prominent voices who think that all Viper needs to be great is a small push in the right direction. Viper is a challenging one because I think she's really, really good. I think she's just missing a little bit. She's missing a little bit of utility. So like she's almost A tier. I do think that she's good in theory, um, but nobody's really playing with her. No one's really kind of unlocked her true potential. And so despite remaining a near permanent fixture at the bottom of the competitive tier list, in the right hands, Viper can be exactly what she was designed to be, deadly. Yes, sir. One enemy remaining. Down. Is down. I think it's close. Hey. Oh, I read it. I read it. But Valorant is still a very new game, so Viper's future as a member of the Cult of Low Tiers is still pretty uncertain. She could get buffed tomorrow and be hanging with the top tiers holding her own. Or at least that's what all you Viper mains keep telling yourselves. 
but you're in luck because Viper isn't the only member of the cult of low tiers, and a low tier doesn't need buffs to win big tournaments. All they need is a hero who can champion them and take them to the highest level of competition. Take Pikachu, for example. Going from Smash 64 to Melee, Pikachu got weaker and slower, and he just couldn't compete with the game's top characters. So almost no one picked him for most of Melee's competitive existence. That is, until Axe came along. Seeing that Edgehog attempt by M2K, trying to close it out as quickly as he could. Oh, M2K in a really bad spot right now. Let's see what's gonna happen. He gets the up smash. That's Axe taking it. Oh my gosh, and Axe can't believe it. He can't believe it. He moves on. Winner's finals to face Hungry Box. Now, Axe's devotion to his low tier of choice was tested many times. He's Don't got one HP. We have if a game five. I'll be so mad. Oh, oh, nice. Okay. Jab yeah. back here. Yeah. Axe played so nice. Oh, he did. But it's I'm not enough. Oh, oh fortunate. Oh. Yeah, one little wave dash there at the 3-0. But like any real member of the cult of low tiers, Axe was determined to prove that he could win with Pikachu, that all the hard work and dedication he put into mastering the character wasn't for nothing. And he was right. There it is. He's gonna get the grab. Here we go. Umbro. This is what What's he Umbro. gonna get here? Up okay. smash. Oh, Thunder. 85. Oh, He's off stage. Axe, 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 Axe is, is your Smash Summit 8 champion. Axe did it. He's done it. A Pikachu has won a major Smash Summit 8. I don't know what to say. I just, uh, I've been working really hard for this. And, uh, I don't know. It's just a long time coming. It's just crazy to me. Woo! Thanks to Axe's Smash Summit 8 victory, Pikachu finally had his first significant tournament win. But as incredible as his accomplishment was, people aren't exactly rushing to main Pikachu. Axe is still pretty much the only Pikachu main at the top because being a member of this particular cult can be kind of lonely. And people haven't really changed their minds about the character. Pikachu is just not top tier material. If you made it this far into the video, you're either a card-carrying member of the cult of low tier, or you're interested in joining. So let me warn you, not every low tier you pick is going to have a champion who wins a huge tournament and proves that they're worth playing after all. Some characters aren't worth maining. Some are just too terrible and exist only to annoy everyone around them. And the mascot for that kind of annoying, unplayable, useless low tier is League of Legends Teemo. <laughs> um, the Teemo thing was kind of like at the on the moment, hit the moment. We're just like, oh, what should we land against Singe to on him? And we're like, oh, okay, let's get Teemo. Because Rayman's always like, Teemo's the best. With very few exceptions, Teemo has basically gone unpicked in League of Legends pro play for years. And here's YouTuber Scooch explaining just how bad he is. Darius wins against Teemo. Mordekaiser wins against Teemo. Garen wins against Teemo. And even if they get bullied in lane, it doesn't matter because they all offer something later. Whereas Teemo offers no hard CC and can blind one person. Do you know how ass that is? Now, to be fair to Teemo, early on, he was actually pretty decent. He was intended as a counter to tanky damage dealers. A very nice job coming out, Turtle. It's up on the sneaky, the 80 carry draw. The Ignite takes him down, and Expecial's able to pick himself up a kill. Teemo coming out of nowhere, and he gets him with the mushroom. But after a 2014 nerf, Teemo basically faded away from pro play entirely, appearing only as an accident or a troll pick. What? what? Are you serious? I think they're. Uh, I think they've gotten to the point where they are so confident in this best of three that they are straight up trolling. The thing I'm super excited about is the fact that we're gonna get to see the Zed locked in for push. There's the Teemo. <laughs> yes. There's the Teemo. Oh, how is oh. Teemo into Aatrox? I mean, I, I imagine it's a hard stomp. I mean, in what universe does, does Teemo lose to anything? If really, I mean. <laughs> but outside of pro play, Teemo is actually pretty popular. He still gets plenty of new skins, Riot sells Teemo merch for reasons I cannot explain, and he's become something of a mascot for League of Legends solo queue hell. Get the f*** out of here, you little bitch. Guy better be careful trading against me. But you see, this is why I warned you. These days, Teemo only exists to be annoying. It sucks to play against him or with him. He's the ultimate troll pick. Look, terrible characters often attract as many people as they scare away. And if you're one of the poor fools who got suckered in, 
happens to the best of us. The love-hate relationship we have with the games we play might go a long way to explain how these questionable choices still find their niche. Whether you worship Viper, Pikachu, or even Teemo, the cult of low tiers is powerful, its history is long, and its reach is vast. Because we all love to rebel. We all love to play off meta, to succeed no matter how hard the situation may be, and to dream of one day making our low tier great. So Viper mains, for all the memeing I've done on you. I salute you, because you are just the latest in a long legacy of heroes trying to make a low tier work. The mission of the low tier main is an honorable one. We all wish we could do what you're doing, but there is no fucking way I'm putting myself through that. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.